Hello, in this video I want to explain to you the so-called doubling algorithm regarding to Wikipedia that is solving the so-called list rank problem in a parallel manner. Before I start, make sure to read the video description in case there were any updates or corrections regarding this video. It's written in the video description. Okay, so what's the list rank problem? Imagine we have a linked list here with four elements. This is the last one pointing to null or nil or zero. We want to have a so-called list rank. We want to know the so-called list rank for each element. The list rank tells us the number of hops until we reach the end of the list. So the last element is already the last element. So here we have zero uh, hops until the end. The list rank is zero. This one has one hop to the end. So we have list rank of one. We have list rank of two and list rank of three. Now, why would you want to have this list rank? Actually, I can't explain to you. But you might check out the English Wikipedia, give some keywords, and maybe if you search for application list rank problem, you hit stack overflow and stuff, and you might go from there. Okay, that being said, first, if you want to learn the list rank and you go the naive way, uh, and just go the linear way, you just go through each element and like count the elements, and then you kind of know what's the list rank. But uh, the problem is you end up with a linear algorithm. That's not good. We want a better one. And here comes the doubling algorithm. We have one given constraint here. We have for each element in the list, we have one processor, one CPU that handles this element. So we have processor, for example, processor zero for this element. We have processor three for this one. We have processor eight for this one and processor uh, one for this one. I want to emphasize that, of course, the list is here from left to right, but in memory, it's like crazy, like, like where, 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 I hope you can see my pointer. And also the processors are not necessarily, this is not necessarily, processor zero, CPU zero, does not necessarily contain the first element. Okay, so this is like bound to this element, bound to this element, bound to this element, bound to this element. What can each CPU see? Each CPU can see the data and the pointer to the next element, but it cannot see the next element. Okay, that being said, um, let's scroll down a little bit and I show you the algorithm. I will explain it while drawing it. This is the algorithm. We first have an initialization part and then we have a like the running part. First, I'd like to give us a new and better list. This is a list with seven items and I skipped the data part and we only see the pointer part. The pointer points here and this pointer points here. And the last one points to zero. Okay, step one, initialization is pretty straightforward. We have, uh, let's say, we call it step one. Initialization, we just check out each CPU just checks out, is my next pointer null? Then set the rank, the current rank to zero. And if not, set the current rank to one. So we're going to do, the next pointer is not null, so we have a rank of one. Uh, same here and here. Only this one is different, points to null, so we have zero. By the way, we skipped that part where we can have race conditions. So in this example, for this algorithm, we expected that all the CPUs run with the same speed and are synchronized, so we don't have any race conditions that we have to care about now. Okay, we have a step two now. Let's go down here in this area. Um, we don't need to care about so much. We don't need to care so much about this one. This is just the uh, when we should end. It makes no sense at the moment, but will make more sense later. And now each CPU is going to do this. It's going to check if it's next is null, and if not, then we do this stuff. So first we update our rank, and we use the current rank and just add the the rank of the next one. That means we add the current rank and the next rank, and this is this rank. Also same here, again, we add these two and get the new rank value. And we figure out that almost everything is two. Only this one, because one plus zero is one, we stay with the one. Okay, now it's getting freaky. We now change the list. We set a new, we, we change the pointer and we change it to the, to the next, next element. That means here, before this one pointed to this element, now it points to this element. So over here. And this one pointed to this one, but now it points to this one because each one pointed to the next one, right? So this goes on. 
Now it's getting interesting. This one pointed to this one and now points to the one that this one pointed to. This one pointed to zero, so this one now also points to zero. Okay, finished with step two. We start again from the beginning. Uh, why? Because this is null. So this if hits, so the last element does not run this part of code. Okay, step three. So we start again with the loop and we start again to add the rank. Now we add the rank, the, the previous one, and we add the rank of the one we're pointing to. That means we have this two here. Let's also draw, draw this. We add this two and this two, and this is our new rank value over here. And if you can do math, you're good. Okay, then we have this two and this two points to this two, so we have a four here as well. This one, the rank was two, points to this one, also rank four. This one, rank two plus rank one, so we have a rank of three. This one, rank two plus zero, we have rank of two. This one has a zero here, so this hits, we have no update, so this stays one and this stays zero. And now we change the list again. Let's already draw in the zero and zero here and let's start from the left again. This one was formerly pointing to this one and this one was pointing to this one, so this one now points to, oh, this is so difficult to draw, to this one. Okay, phew. Okay, this one pointed to this one, that pointed to that one, so now this points to this one. This one pointed to this one, which pointed to this one, so this one now points to this one. This one pointed to this one. This one pointed to zero, so this one now points to zero. This one pointed to this one, which pointed to zero, so this one now points to zero. Okay, now we're ready for step four. We start again in the loop, and we again set the new rank, the old rank plus the rank of the next one. In this case, we have four plus two, six. In this case, we have four plus one, so we have five. In this case, we have four plus zero. That was stupid, sorry. In this case, we have the pointer to zero, so these numbers don't change anymore. And you can already see we already have a rank here after four iterations. Now this first statement here makes more sense, which is kind of cryptic for, okay, if every pointer is zero, if every pointer points to null, then the algorithm can terminate and is finished. I'm going to leave the rest up to you, but I want to point out, and this is the only thing that's important now, I guess you already figured out that all pointers at the end are zero, because that's the termination condition, right? So that means, so that means, we don't have a full list at the end. We don't have a linked list at the, at the end. So we have to solve this problem somehow. To solve this problem, that's not part of this actual algorithm as far as I understood, but that's a different matter. For example, you could store the pointer values somewhere else in memory in the beginning, or you could instead just use a different memory location for using the changing next pointer. So you have to take some measure to actually restore the list at the very end. Okay, but um, yeah, that's it for the algorithm. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, put them in the comments. Finished.